uh, so let me get this right. The, so it's the Guit brothers or the Git brothers. The Git. Okay. Uh, like, like a guitar. Okay. Perfect. Um, hey, so uh, congratulations. Uh, your film Heads or Fails is at uh, Fantastic Fest, and uh, I believe it premiered yesterday. How, yes. how did that go? Great. It was a great audience, and we had really so much pleasure to be here. Yes, if and you... uh, Texas is treating you well? <laughs> yeah, so we love Texas. So it's good. <laughs> All right. So, um, so... We don't speak really good English, so maybe we are going to do some weird words. We will ask Simon, our composer, to speak for us. If we don't oh, no problem. say things. Hey. Hey, so, uh, yeah, so uh, I, I uh, saw your film Mother Schmuckers, I believe it was last year, two years ago. And uh, uh, two years ago, yeah. Fell in love with it. This one, um, I described uh, Mother Schmuckers. It's kind of like over the top, so it's just very slapstick. This one is uh, a bit insane as well, but very, uh, I'd say, subtler, a little more lower key. What, what is the story behind? Uh, the story of heads or fails, and um, yeah, just tell us about that, and then we can get into the, uh, we can get into talking about it more. Uh, so after Mother Schmuckers, we were like uh, starting to to from think, scratch. starting from the scratch, and we were thinking about new ideas and what we really wanted to tell with Lenny, and so we kind of uh, started to write some ideas and. And also just after the shooting of Mother Schmuckers, it was the first time we shot with a, a big crew. So we did like a short film, only the two of us and one actor. And the actor was Axel Perrin, the one who plays Ronnie in, uh, in Heads or Fails. Mm -hmm. And so we had kind of the beginning of what we wanted to do in movies, just uh, hanging around and telling stories about a guy who, who just uh, gambles and, and tries to get on with life. How you say? Sure. <laughs> and so uh, after this short film, we were like, oh, we really want to do that in a long feature film with the crew and stuff. So we started to write some ideas and we wrote a lot of them. Like we wrote like maybe 30 or 40 different stories around this character. And we were still searching so how to be more uh, unique. And, and so we we thought about doing not a male character, but a female character. So it was a little more uh, distance from us. And everything changed because being a female, it was different. So it was how to tell the story of a, a woman being a, a gambler and a, and a crook and, and dealing with those kind of stuff in life. And so that's how uh, Eds of Fails was born. And we tried to put all of those stories into one and put away all the bad stories and get uh, only stay with the good ones, the great yeah. ones. So I'm just curious with, uh, you know, did that change the tone having the female character or is it more of the story that kind of changed the tone from other schmuckers to, to this one? No, I don't think it's changed the tones. It was just how to get this funny and how to, just for us, it was like a, uh, a way to excite us to tell a new story, not uh, not not doing the same. Yeah, so uh, I keep comparing the two films just because uh, you yeah. know they're very unique, and uh, I, I find that your humor is is like a cross between Charlie Chaplin and the Three Stooges. Mm -hmm. um, what what makes you laugh, and what are your influences, your comedy influences? Charlie Chaplin and the Three Stooges. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, in fact, we are, we are big film buffs and we watch lots of movies. And of course, we we did watch Charlie Chaplin. We did watch the Three Stooges. We, Buster, Buster Keaton, the Marx Brothers, and also like uh, new stuff like the, the Tim and Eric, uh, Eric Andre, people from France, also Eric Ramsey. And also not comedy stuff. We watch really like lots of stuff, and uh, we try to to put those all of those references into our own cinema. Mm -hmm. And uh, we like to to like show our actors some some weird stuff also to to uh, to let them see what's our universe also. Yeah, one of the the uh, influences I felt with Charlie Chaplin was the 
I think both films, especially this one, deals with kind of poverty, people just trying to, uh, you know, kind of at the lower end of the economic scale, just trying to break their way out. Is Am I seeing things or is that kind of uh, the, the way things are in Belgium? No, I think that's that's what moves us also because we like to tell the story of people we love and for us it's more lovable and and uh, uh, possibility to feel ourselves into the character if they deal with tough stuff in life, not uh, people with lots of money and and for us it's more uh, emotional and I don't really know how to say. Before. Bah, que c'est plus facile de se de connecter ouais but it's also true that in in Brussels in particular there's kind of a double edged it's like a it's a city of of poverty and of uh what's the opposite of poverty richness <laughs> I don't know the <laughs> word and they're not those they don't the two worlds don't communicate with each other very much. No, that's not true. He's, he's an American. No, I know everything. <laughs> We're in Austin, and we can see that it's even worse, that like the poverty is, uh, seems uh, horrible, people in the street and people in the car. Yeah, and that's in, not what in I Belgium, In Belgium, it's not like that. It's more, I think everything is more connected, but still you can feel the differences and you are uh, always like confronted by, the, the, I, how, by how it's difficult when you don't have money well, and... What I was going to say is in Belgium, if you don't have money, you can easily you can find ways uh, yeah, yeah. to have cheap stuff and find ways to travel for cheap. And in America, it's a little harder to do that sometimes. Yeah. It's, you do get the impression that Brussels is a city of making it work. Mm -hmm. so, but it's, it's as simple as we, we get moved by films and characters in, in movies that, that are like that, that are a bit of loser and uh, of uh, people who get life, life hard. So we want to tell the, the story of that kind of character also. Yeah, okay. And then let's talk about the music then. Uh, okay. Yeah, how did you get involved with the uh, Geek Brothers and uh, what what kind of were the discussions about music? Oh, the discussions about music were, were manifold and were all in French. So I don't know ever know what they were actually saying about it. Just kidding, kind of. But um, I've <clears throat> I've been working and hanging out with these guys for th like three years now, initially because they used some music of mine at the end of Mother Schmunkers, some pre-written music. Mm -hmm. And I think for this one, I something I really specifically remember is that, the, that we talked a lot about how we wanted the soundtrack to sound like it was making reference to a lot of great 70s soundtracks. That we both love like i remember talking to harpo a lot about um the soundtrack to uh taxi driver by bernard herman the scorsese movie taxi driver and like just examples of 70s soundtracks that that are from films of uh, american films mostly but also not so much and then but then we really didn't want it to sound like pastiche as the french say so like we're making references to this world of music, but we're not trying to actually recreate it exactly, you know? So our discussions were like, you know, I would bring ideas in and then the discussions were like, okay, like, how does this reflect well with what's happening? And do we, what, what about it is inspiring for us? And are there themes in the music? Like, does everybody have their own theme, every character? And or are there more? Is it that emo certain emotions have yeah. their own theme, or certain ideas have their own theme? And I think <clears throat> something that was great for me is that I felt really free to just throw shit at the wall and see what stuck for them. You know, like mm -hmm. we would do things like one day, me and Lenny went to a friend of ours' house who had a piano and a couple mics, and I just like fucked around on the piano recording ideas and messing it all and just experimenting while the two of them played video games nearby and uh and that's the the sound that you hear in the beginning of the film right at the beginning you hear this kind of sound and it's a sample that i took from me fucking around on the piano and 
played around with it and like added all the stuff and so we we were following our we were following our bliss when we were like collectively we would when we would find something that really spoke to us in the music we would all be like oh okay this let's follow this idea right i don't know yeah that's about right yeah. yeah i mean i was going to ask you if there was a difference between composing uh or is there something rules for composing for comedies but it doesn't really sound like there is one no the rule i mean it depends the rules for the rule for composing american comedies which i've done in the past is that nobody gives a fuck what the music sounds like in american comedy movies because they're too busy laughing about the jokes and i think for this movie in particular it's like it's a comedy but it's a really sad comedy yeah we wanted the music to because the the film is we wanted the film to be a comedy and the character is living we want didn't want to be heavy and uh, the the character the Armon is living everything lightly and we wanted the music to feel like it is it's an interior mind and it's very intense whereas the film is like light and uh, and the music puts puts her down it's like everything is and grave. i think for me there's also the just that like the music has the it, it, music translates emotional states no. so effectively <laughs> <laughs> and so there's a I, i think the 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 movie itself has some distance but then the in the times where the music really is in the forefront of the film it's very much adding it's like trying to add romance and child like or naivete we might say to the to to it like when she has her dream yeah the music there is so as emotional and sweet and sad also right. we often, we often oh, talk what's the best what's the good soundtrack and simon and sir was like a good soundtrack is a good cd yeah that's a classic <laughs> that's a classic thing that film composers know a good soundtrack <laughs> makes a good album Absolutely. We want people right. to jog on. I'm What? sorry. We want people to want people do to their off. jogging on the uh, CD. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last question. Um, just curious, but what is the filmmaking scene like in Belgium? Uh, you know, we we talk about it when we talk to filmmakers from other countries, and I I have no idea. Uh, so, what is the film scene like, and how did you slip into it? We we had the chance to to start off uh, the the to do film with a fund because it's like the state who who give uh, money to young uh, directors and uh, we we have a lot of friends who try to do films and uh, like there, there's a friend who is here with us uh, at the Fantastic Fest we know for 13 years and he was presenting a film or so so it's like a little bit of a group of friends who do who try to do films together and uh, helping each other and that way but in belgium uh, cinema is mostly funded by by the states mm -hmm. that's how we it's not an insane concept to america. <laughs> yeah, i know i mean it's like um you know is there an indie scene where where filmmakers are just making films using their cell phones or you know is it mostly through I assume the the state funds most of the theatrical films that come out of Belgium. But most of them is like funded by the states, but the movie that aren't funded by states is more like huge movies who get money on their private own way, money. private money. And maybe there are there are some of uh, really like really low budget movies with no money. And finally, you can get some money from uh, like uh, post production by the state also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, yeah, so uh, thanks for joining me. Let, talk to me, talk a little bit about Fantastic Fest, why you chose it. I believe you, you Mother Schmuckers came out of Fantastic Fest. So uh, we had Cannes and Sundance and we said no to go to <laughs> Fantastic Fest. Yeah. So that's that's uh, how we love Fantastic Fest. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. You got to skip, uh, skip these pretentious yeah. film festivals and go for the real yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thanks a lot for joining me and uh, and good luck with Heads or Fails. Thanks. Thank you so much.